G'day folks. Well, what we have here is just a quick little autopsy on a solar pool heating controller. This is our, one of our competitors' models. Um, I can't disclose who I work for or what our controllers are, but this one's similar. It's made by the same company, so I can show you that one. Uh, I want to fix this one up and actually make it into a working unit because they're essentially just a temperature differential switch. You set a high low high high temp for roof, or you set a preferred roof temperature and a preferred pool temperature, and it'll cut in and cut out accordingly, and just maintain the pool at your prefer preferred temperature using uh, thermistors. One's usually attached to the pump, which I think would be this one, or somewhere in the system near the, in the pump room. And uh, the other one, this one here, which had been cut off, goes up to the rooftop, but I don't think that's the right sensor for it. Uh, the display on this is very unhappy too, as you can see it's very degraded, so we'll look at this one later. But this one here, we're going to autopsy. This is multi-solar controller by Associated Controls. Um, I've just put some random thermistors on it, like they come off a split system air conditioner, and it at least keeps it working long enough, it just doesn't give the right readings, or actually, it doesn't actually give you a reading. This one here displays the actual temperature, this one I haven't been able to find a way to do it. And I can run the pump in winter mode, which will run it for like, I think it's like a couple, 10 minutes every hour or something, or, no, um, what is it, it'll run it on a cycle, just during winter time, just circulate water, keep the pump, pump seal and bearings happy, that sort of thing, it'll run it periodically, but I can make it, yeah, make it trigger the relay doing that, which gives power to the power outlet, but that's about it. So without the proper thermistors and the um, setup manual and everything, it's not going to happen. So we'll unplug him. I've already taken some screws out. They use Torx screws on these ones. Um, I notice the cable reliefs in here are fairly open, and one of the problems I have with the ones at work, um, as a pretty much dedicated repair technician now, I find that ants and things get in there and make nests under the components and start shorting stuff out particularly when they get into the switch mode power supplies. These old solid transformer based ones aren't so bad, but the ones that run on switch mode power supplies do tend to die very quickly when you get ants between the legs of the optocouplers and other things. So, yeah. As you can see, there's not much to this. You've got a very basic AC transformer for the mains. You've got active and neutral in. There's the diodes for the rectification. Relay to control the pump. Uh, just, it's just a switched outlet, a relay controlled outlet. Samba capacitors, nothing's obviously bulging. Uh, some of these space age ones do the big caps in the board, they start bulging and going. Uh, I know the boss said I could take as many of the obsolete ones and fix them up and put them on eBay, but if I show them, everyone will know where I work, so I'm not, I'm not even going to bother doing that, I just don't have time to be uh, repairing solar controllers. They are easy, but it's just one of those things. That resistor's gotten awfully hot though, but no harm done. It's just a, it's still a high wattage resistor, it's just a bit dry jointed. Classic example of a dry solder joint. Yeah, there's not much in it. Chips, ST, that's a uh, ST62, ST62T20C6. That's a ST... Um, Model is 93C46. The ST HCF 409 4BE. 4BE. Okay, they're the display drivers, one for each. Um, seven segment LED, so got display drivers. The socketed one will be the programmed ROM chip. That'll contain its actual programming. All of these controllers have a PROM chip in them, EPROM or something like that. That big socket there will have the EEPROM for this one. Uh, these ones usually have a version sticker printed on top of them for the, man the um, distributor or the, uh, like in case of my work, we have our own versions and then other companies which get them made by the same company like this one will have their own versions or their own software, their own interface, like programming this one would be different to programming the one at work, even though it's made by the same company. So yeah, it's a nice big MOV there. But as you can see, there's not much to them. It's a temperature differential switch. 
uh, with the correct thermistors, this would still work. I mean, I'm not going to throw it out, I'm going to keep it with this one. They are handy for certain projects. Uh, you can use them for cooling systems and things if you want to. Uh, you just set the, the set temperature can go fairly high, fairly low. I've seen some of the faulty ones read up to like 80 degrees when the thermistor is just sitting on the desk at the ambient temperature. So it's pretty obvious they can be cranked up pretty high. Um, that's a good thing for hobbyists and things. So if you do find one and you like messing around with uh, cooling systems and engines and that sort of thing and you don't mind having to plug it in and at 240 volts for it to work, well, this is probably the right thing because it'll actually give you a digital, in most cases it'll give you a digital readout of the actual temperature which in this case you could set the crankcase or the um, cooling system temperature to that, that of the pool and set your differential accordingly so you want the pump to circulate once it reaches say 82 degrees um, whatever, it could be for an electrolysis cell or a HHO cell or something like that uh, as long as you've got your sensor in a well or something like that, a brass well silicon the thing in there and away you go so there you have it that's a uh, basic solar pool heating controller temperature differential switch so really neat and this one here is not much difference you just got a normal AC transformer two DC caps and there's a diode half wave or something diode there Cen sorry center tap by the looks of it um, relay for the uh, switched outlet and on the other side of that board there'll be the display driver the display seven segment LED chips and the prom chip so there you go it's Space Age Electronics SC2DD issue A 9th 1998 this one here is associated controls um, 01 seems to be the date on that one so it's obviously a lot newer uh, yeah, they look like reasonably built controllers. Only thing is, they probably get some returns on ones that are out in a more harsh environment, particularly up north in Queensland. We find you get stuff getting in the tiniest cracks. And this housing's not even well, all that well sealed, but being rounded like that, if it does get rained on, most of the water is just going to run down the sides of it and out, if anywhere through the socket. But yeah. One of the failure modes of the ones that work is that the casings originally the way they were designed were they were designed like that with an overlap but no gasket and they'd leak water so I was forever throwing them out because the power supply was just blown to pieces and um, yeah these ones here seem to be a lot more robust anyway that's enough rambling about solar controllers I hope you learned something from it um, yeah stay tuned for more